USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Dyrude on the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. What's up, Los Angeles? Welcome into another edition of the Believe in LA Football Podcast here on the Believe Podcast Network, always on LAFBnetwork.com, your destination for Los Angeles football. Have a fantastic show for you today. Rams fans, we're doing it all. Rams, Seahawks. Uh, but first, got to talk to my man, Frost. What's going on, man? Uh, good. I'm, I'm good. I'm excited about the show today. we got a couple of guys that we're familiar with. And uh, it's a big game coming up, and I can't wait to get these guys on. Yeah, as always, show is brought to you by betonline.ag. Go to bet on this game. It's going to be a fun one. A lot of prop bets, over-unders. Uh, if you listen, when you listen to the show, we have our own kind of side wagers going on, so you can head to bet online to throw money down on those as well. But let's go ahead and get right into it. We're welcomed by Brett Davern, Lofa Tatupu of the Seahawks podcast. Uh, excited to talk about this game coming up. Well, uh, I don't know how to really start it off, but I'll start it off like this. It's a little messy, but here we go. Uh, there's four of us in here. It's a kind of a big round table. We did this a little earlier in the season, but it's the Seahawks podcast meets the guys from the Rams podcast or whatever, California football. What are you calling that thing, Ryan? Where you cover, the LA football sometimes podcast. You cover LA. Yeah, the LA football podcast is Ryan Dyrude, Frosty Rucker, and of course, myself, Brett, and Lofa. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Um, there's a lot of voices on this one, and uh, let's just get right into it, guys. Um, Seahawks Rams coming up on Saturday, 140 is the kickoff time. The game is on Fox. It's the first round of the playoffs, but it's the third game between these two teams this year. Uh, who wants to go first? Somebody jump in. Well, I'm excited. Round three. I mean, anytime you have a division game in the playoffs, the stage is that much bigger. Um, I mean, obviously everyone gets up for a playoff game no matter what, but when it's your division opponent, division rival, and it's round three, uh, obviously we'll get into more of this, but the biggest question mark for the Rams is who's starting at quarterback. Uh, Sean McVay has been extremely, he came out and said he's not going to answer any questions about the starting quarterback, and he's even done so to disguise it even more in practices instead of like, one quarterback taking reps with the ones with the twos. He has them both doing reps at the exact same time to, you know, switching off receivers. And then they're doing their interviews, their zoom interviews at the exact same time as well. So he's kept it pretty close to the vest, not telling anyone who's going to be starting on Saturday. I think it's a smoke screen because he's going to be playing quarterback for the Rams. Okay. I mean, he was Mr. Football in Georgia, right? He beat out Calvin Johnson back in the day when he was in high school. And I think I think it, it, it's it's gonna it's gonna shock the world. This is a hot take. You're hearing it here first on the Believe Sports Network. Sean McVay will be playing quarterback for the Rams this weekend. What are they doing? The wishbone? The Power eye, the veer? Obviously kidding. The betting odds. What, you think there's betting odds of that? <laughs> Maybe at one uh, on uh, betonline.ag. You could take that yeah. profit. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know um, if McVay's on there, but yeah, you could look. Why don't you guys tell us then who's going to be playing quarterback for the Rams? I know Frosty has an idea. Who would you rather have? What'd you say, Lo? Who would you rather have start this week? You can't put golf in. He just had surgery on his thumb. So it's a smoke screen. You know who's playing. Yeah. Ryan did bring up an interesting point this week. We talked and he was like, so what if they played both of them? Do you think it would be like how the Saints did? I was like, do not disrespect or disrespect Taysom that way. I said, Walford is not Taysom Hill. No way near that. I don't think both of them play. I don't think any of that. I think it's a smokescreen, and Goff is on the sideline. Hmm. Okay. Well, you guys watched the game last week. How did Walford do? You know, he, right. I thought he played all right. He, he, he ran McVay's different style of offense that Goff is not able to do. He's a very mobile quarterback. Um, you know, he had some missed throws that – whether that's talent or whether that's just his first ever NFL start. I and mean, we talked about on our show, he was on wall street like three years ago and then played in the AAF. And then now has been a backup with no preseason snaps at all this year. So some of that could have just been nerves and um, you know, miss miss throws in that sense. But, but he was able to open the playbook up with him because you can get him outside. Uh, there was two instances of third and long that he extended with his legs and got first downs. That's not what you're going to get with golf. Um, granted, that's maybe not what you, the formula you want, going into a playoff game and Goff has the experience and missed his first ever NFL game ever last week. So it's a toss up, man. I don't know. Yeah, but I just, it, oh, sorry. 
Lova, I was just going to say, it doesn't make me feel super comfortable even with Walford playing or whatever, because look, the Seahawks, <laughs> we don't do well with quarterbacks, like you just said, who can extend it with their legs. We don't do well with quarterbacks who are, uh, you know, making starts where they need to get the ball out of their hand quickly. And that short game starts taking them down the field with Cooper Cup and, and possession receivers like you guys got. I don't, I honestly watching Jared Goff in the last game and that throw he made, uh, you know, on the, the interception by Diggs, I'd rather have Goff in the game to be perfectly honest with you. Like we, we haven't done well with, with quarterbacks who are kind of making their first starter, looking to make a name for themselves in the past. We don't have, a, I mean, sometimes we end up winning the game, but those quarterbacks scare me sometimes, Lofa. What do you think? This is exactly where I was going with it, is I would rather see golf, especially with a broken thumb, and, <laughs> you know, not as mobile as Wofford. Um, just the points that you pointed out, uh, that we've had trouble with mobile quarterbacks, but – uh, I think playing it close to the best, like you guys said, McVay is just in this guy's ear saying, look, we have the number one defense. Do not turn the ball over. We'll get out of here with the win by getting turnovers on defense like they did the first matchup. So mm -hmm. now you got Cam Akers has emerged. I mean, we didn't see him last game. He was he was hurt, yep. and uh, it was just Henderson. And, and Akers has really added an element to that game that takes a lot of pressure off of the quarterback, whoever it may be. So – uh, I'd rather see golf just like, just like you partner. Yeah. The only thing that, uh, I, I feel good about going into, well, not the only thing, but, um, one of the things I feel good about going into the game is we're getting some guys back on the offensive line on the Seahawks side of the ball. Mike Iupati, Brandon, uh, shell it, are both coming back for this game. And, you know, with the Rams, obviously looking at them, you know, Aaron Donald and that defensive line and the way that they get after Russell every single time we play. I mean, for the Seahawks, you got to keep Russell upright and have the ball coming out of his hands because he, he can tend to hold on to it sometimes. And so getting those offensive linemen back for us, I think is huge. Yeah. How do you, the matchup here, I'll put it to you guys like this. The matchup really comes down to is, Obviously, you guys would love golf in there. You know, golf will trick the, the the game off. He doesn't add any extra dimension to it. And right now, with your defense now finally coming together, because you guys had skids all the way into this point, in addition to Dunlap, you guys are playing with energy. Come on now. Yeah, golf would be the ideal person you would want it. I'm <laughs> the, I would stick <laughs> this Walford kid in there and make it so unbalanced that you don't know what you're getting. These jet sweeps. Uh, quarterback dives, uh, slow the game down, eat the yards, eat the clock. And that's the best way because if you tire this, this defense down for you guys and not give the ball to Russell to score and be dynamic, I just I, – I, this is, is going to be a great matchup because it's, it's just – it's not balanced. You don't know what you're getting from this kid, and that scares everyone. You do not know. Yeah. And I, th I think that's a good point. Sorry, Brett, if I jump in real quick. because. Oh, one of the biggest things that has been Goff's deficiency later this season, especially in that second matchup against the Seahawks, was the amount of three and outs the Rams offense get. They just could not extend drives or even get a drive going. Just three and outs, giving the ball back to Russ and, and the Seahawks offense. And in last week, again, it was, we talked about in our show, Cardinals defense is, you know, struggling right now. Cardinals team is struggling right now. Um, but even though the Rams only scored like 18 points, they were able to move the ball. They extended some drives down eat some clock up. Like I mentioned, they were able to run more uh, with Walford getting over 50 yards with on his own account. So in that sense, I think that's good to, Hey, get us 17 points. It's all we need. Just don't turn the ball over and we'll just be safe with it and, you know, extend, you know, get six play drives, seven play drives. Um, whereas Goff has just really struggled just going three and out a lot. And part of that, I don't know if that's play calling. Cause we've seen, I've talked about a lot all of a sudden in the second quarter against you guys, it's like, they stopped running the ball. You know, it's a three, nothing game rams up. And all of a sudden they go six pass plays in a row. I'm like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, I mean, I see this game as, as, as being, uh, well, we always talk about on our show, like a real slobber knocker. I think it's going to be ugly, man. Like the Seahawks defense is trending in the right direction, but the CX offense lately has been not trending in the right direction for me. Russ isn't completing the deep balls like he was earlier in the season. Um, it, it just seems off on that for whatever reason. And it's, it's been hard for them to get the offense going. Even last week against San Francisco, they didn't get it going until the fourth quarter, which I know the USC guys are going to tell me that that's when you can win the game. I hear you, but it's annoying as a fan. And um, so, you know, with with them, with you guys having such a great defense and us kind of sputtering on offense lately, I mean, I, Lofa, I think you'd agree. Like, we don't really know what we're going to see from the Seahawks offense because it's it's just been so, like, 
consistently inconsistent sort of lately? I'll tell you what we're going to see. A healthy, okay. a healthy dose of Chris Carson. All the last two, three years we made it to the playoffs, we haven't had him. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, he's the X factor. He is one. So you think he's going to run versus this defense? I think he's going to get 30 touches. Okay. I don't think <laughs> so. This is, this is the number one defense. At the, at, at the end of the day, this is Russell's team, and Russell has to win it. He ain't giving the ball 30, 30 plays to nobody. It's at least 20 to 25. I'll nobody. Say that. Whether it's, you know, split 12 and 12, catches and carries. Nobody. Make a bet on it. Make a bet on it. Somebody set an over-under and make a bet on it. I'm sorry. Okay. Bet on line. I'll get 22. 22, 22 carries. carries. 22 total touches for Touch Chris Carson. For the running back run game or him? For him. Total touches. Passes included. Okay. Yes. What are you wagering? See how he changes a couple once you press him. He gives you – you shake him down a little bit, then he gives you, like, the real – the okay. real bet. If you are, if we want to win this game easily, easily, we're going to give him 30 touches. 30, half of our plays, the ball will be in his hands if we want to win this game easily. Wait, yeah. I need, we need, we got to get Frosty on the record on this though. So Lofa, you're setting it at 22. Frosty, you going over or under total touches for Chris Carson for the game, over or under 22? Under. Okay. All right. What's so on the line? He doesn't have the playoff experience. Now we got to know what's on the line. Ryan, you said the terms. Come on, give a suggestion. What are we going to put me on the spot like that? I don't. Come on. What are we going to do? Play the game, put Ryan. We'll, we'll marinate with it throughout the show and then we'll, we'll okay. have a wager we at the end. We got to figure something out here. Yeah. We'll have a wager at the end of the show for this. All right. Brought to you by uh, betonline.ag, promo code belief. Yeah. We'll just drop that in there again. Um, <laughs> but no, that is important, obviously, for Chris Carson. Let me ask you guys this sticking with the offense. DK Metcalf has been shut down by Jalen Ramsey. What do you, what do How you do? dare you? What do you How do to get him, open to get him involved? I will not even let you finish that sentence. It's a fact. No, Russell Wilson didn't throw the ball to DK. I'm sorry, but it'd be Is that a fear I, factor. I could play DB in the NFL as long as the quarterback doesn't throw it at the guy I'm defending. Come on. Any NFL player that way, right? <laughs> I'm not going to let saying, you. I'm not going to let you do it. Russell's not going to do that again. He's going to go to DK early. He's going to go to DK often. He's going to go to Tyler often. It's going to look like they're trying to set records like they were in the last game. They're just going to be, you know, snapping the ball and throwing it to his two best targets out there at wide receiver. And I, I want to see the, the, the actual true matchup between uh, Ramsey and Metcalf because I don't even think we've gotten a real dose of – of those two guys really getting to battle it out, uh, you know, throughout the game, like they should be able to. And I'll that's one of the things I'm looking forward to watching. Brett and Opa, I don't think I'll see any of the extras from DK going against Jalen Ramsey. I think this is why he, he plays the game. He's not going to be out of control. He's not going to be egging them on because Jalen Ramsey can go there with you. Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. there with you. Like and you're not going to see any extras. And I, I also can sit here and say, because the Rams are iffy at quarterback, this is going to be a Russell versus that defense uh, all game. The, the the Rams offense don't expect anything from them. Russell's going to have to beat this defense, and that's what's going to happen because it's going to be tight because that offense is going to run the ball and slow the clock and then force Russell to have to stretch the field to get points. Mm -hmm. They're going mm -hmm. to pin them. They're going to play defensive the whole game. They're going to play yeah. defensive. They're not going to want to want the guy to lose the game. They're not throwing yeah. the ball up. He's field. not going to be put in a position to lose this game. Yeah, it's field position. You know, their mentality going in, number one defense, field position, and, uh, and don't turn the ball over. And that's a turnover margin. Me and Frosty know how important that is to, you know, the outcome of a game ever since we were in college. And all of our losses, we've lost the, the turnover margin by, you know, negative one or more. And so 12-0 and 0, the, the, the Seahawks 12 and 0 uh, when they don't, when they win the turnover margin, 0 and 4 when they lose it by one or more. So that's the key to the game. So if, if uh, Frosty and Lofa have the Chris Carson over under bet, then Brett, let's have a, let's have a Metcalf catch bet. How many, how many catches is DK Metcalf getting? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I want to, I want to say this too. When we, did this round table on the first week. There was, a, I feel like a lot of respect going back and forth. You guys are coming in hot. Like you think Seahawks are just going to roll this week. Where's all this confidence coming from? Well, I mean, I, we're, you know, we're playing some good ball lately. I think, yeah, look, if, if, 
if Russell Wilson targets DK 10 times, now we don't know if all 10 of those targets will be, you know, the Rams, you'll be covering him all 10 times. You know, it depends on how they decide to, if they follow him all over the field or what. Um, I, you know, if I think if Russell throws it at him 10 times, even if it's at Ramsey, all 10 of those times, DK is going to catch so, a, a pretty good but, amount of them. But I would so say. Give us a number, Brett. Don't take the target. Here. Here's the one thing with Brett. Are we talking about against Brett. Brett. No, Ramsey? No, I'm going or in on Hold on, I'm just asking. Going in on Brett. Does it have I'm to be against Ramsey, or are you talking about for the whole game? Come on, you and Lopa, you got to shake you guys down to get an answer. Just, it's, just asking. Ramsey's going to be on him the entire game, so it's going to be all right. against Ramsey. Just take the targets against Ramsey. All right, fellas. Ten catches. He'll get ten. If he throws ten it catches. out twelve times. He'll catch ten of them. And that means Ty- that means Tyler Lockett is the real person we should be really paying attention to because everyone wants to see this DK and um, Jalen matchup and, and Locke is going to just burn down. Zyma. You know what? Honestly, if I'm going to keep it completely real, uh, gonna... DK dropping the ball on his own concerns me sometimes more than whoever is playing him on defense. He has some drops every once in a while in big moments. I want to see him clean those he's up. especially in the playoffs. He's a great player. Um, I'm not saying he's not. I'm just saying he's, through. he's a great player. I just know. When it comes to playing versus an elite corner like Jalen, the top of his game is right now. All that extra bully stuff ain't going to happen, even though it's a playoff, because he he's trying to be focused. Okay? Yeah. And that's one thing your coaches are telling them. Like, well, hey, I remember, think it'll get to him. don't get caught up in the moment because you'll throw your whole self off. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think it'll get to him. It looks like there's a little more respect from both sides than any other matchup I've seen all year. I mean, there's a lot of guys, you know, John at DK – you know, with the extras, I haven't seen that from Jalen. I've just seen two. Jalen doesn't have to, Lo. Two monsters going at it. Yeah. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. Last week, though, Jalen and DeAndre, and DeAndre is, I mean, right now, career-wise better than level. Yeah, they went at that's it, a, though. That's a whole different level. and that, That's a guy that will really check if uh, Jalen ate his lunch. Yeah. All right? All right. I'm not saying and that that's no, no bad words towards DK. He's just no. not hot yet. No, well, I, I, we all agree on that. Look, yeah. I love DK. DK is going to be yeah, he's getting there. Be something we've never seen before. But D Hop, man, that's you come can't on, disrespect D Hop like that. Yeah, yeah. that's why you know <laughs> they're, really, they're competing. I'm looking for DK to. I mean, look, if DK used this season to establish himself as one of the top receivers in the league, which I, which we all have, agree and think that yeah. he has, then going into the playoffs, I mean, that's where you really even increase. That what whatever he's trying to build even more, and so I'm I'm looking forward to whatever he's going to do in the playoffs. I hope he has a chance to have some big time games. I hope that I hope he does have a chance to have some to moments, running down the sideline, making big plays, and using that big body and like really flexing. I wish it is, and it may. We don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you're saying ten catches, is that (laughs) what you're saying, Brent? Well, I'm I'm being inflammatory, but yeah. That's what I said. What are you saying? Ten catches. It should be he wins the majority of his targets versus oh. Ramsey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? We're talking about Ramsey and him. That's you. Yeah. I mean, that that's vague. So, right? and let's talk about Brett. For everyone that's listening to this podcast and you're not seeing, Brett is in Seattle. Am I right? No, uh, I'm I'm floating above the earth. If you yeah. look at my, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, that's how egregious that comparison is. Out of this world. He, He's out of this world. He's stoned. And <laughs> you got, he's just going to throw stuff out there, and it's on us to even deflect or just go to the next person. Look, I said if he throws them 12 times, he catches 10. So what I'm saying is, like Lofa said, because he's catching the fair, like the, the vast majority of the balls thrown his way. That's all. It I'm could saying. be a slip screen. I'm not going for shit like that. Mm-hmm. My well, that's why it's hard for me to give you an answer on how many catches he's going to get because they could run a David Moore pop pass at the end of the play and he gets an extra one. I don't know. But it's I'm over it to under you. what we're talking about here, and I can't go over and under. All right, I'll set, I'll eight set eight. the over under at eight catches. I'm giving you every catch. I don't care if it's a screen or not. I'm giving you every catch. So, what's the, the under. so what's the bet? Well, Who set the over under here? You want me to set the over under? You're, you're saying that, yeah, catches. You're, you're the guy that says he's going to have a dominant game. All right, then, well, the over-under would be at eight and a half catches. Okay, so double what he has in two games. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, if you want me to set a fun over-under, there's yeah. the over eight I'll, and a half. Okay. Who's, going over, who's going under? I'll take the over. Yeah, I'll take the under. Okay. Love it. 
we'll have to decide on a wager. We, so we got two ways. So we got Frosty and Lofo with Chris Carson and me and you with DK. So yeah, but the consequences can't be shotgunning a beer like they were last time for you. Like, is that really a consequence? You're on the moon right now. I mean, I hadn't moon. shotgunned a beer in, in years, guys. It was pretty. Yeah, I know. But like, it sounds fun to me. It doesn't sound like a, a brought lot. me back. It was like that instant, like wa- wave over me of just like all these memories. So it was nice. <laughs> Probably we'll could, have, probably could have took me like a minute to finish. So I had a lot of time to, to think. We'll figure out something to put on it. As long as you don't make me put on one of those ugly Rams jerseys. Oh, my gosh. Your guys' uniforms. I'm telling you. Coming from oh. the, the Limesicle uniform, guys? Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. You're the most fun uniform in the NFL. Yeah. I, I personally oh, actually like the Limesicle. I actually like the Limesicle, but it's hard to talk crap on another Look, uniform. And that's what, your do you, what do you even call those, those dirty looking uniforms you guys put on bone color. What is that color? Bone, Swiss maybe. coffee. What is that? You guys are rocking. The jersey doesn't even like match the pants. It's, re- it's weird. Oh. man. It's totally the future. It's the future. We're trendsetters here in LA. I guarantee, you know, the, the numbers everyone's talking shit on that, uh, the, the gradient mm-hmm. guarantee in three years, all numbers will be that. Uh, I hope everyone hates <laughs> Because remember when uniforms went from went from stitching to like the the stamp on, and everyone's like, "Oh, are you kidding me?" Got rid of the stitching. Three years, all the uniforms are like that. All right, who's player of the game? If Rams win, this is a question for you guys. If the Rams win, who do you think the player of the game is going to be? I'll jump in first. Uh, if the if the Rams win, I think I would be looking towards uh, Aaron Donald. Someone on defense, because I agree with you guys. I think it's the defense that has to really step up for you guys in this one, especially if it's the backup quarterback going. So, uh, you know, Aaron Donald is always a nightmare. Every time he plays us, he loves playing us. I hate playing him. (laughs) It's just, you know, because he always has such good games. So for that, that would be my answer. If the, if the Rams win, if we're going defense, you know, we haven't blocked Leonard Floyd all year. Mm. He's five sacks in two games. So if we're going defense. That's the guy that we need to figure out. Uh, I know Donald's always getting pressure, but um, but if the Rams win, it's going to be because they rely on that run game and, and Cam Akers. So I'm going to go yeah. Akers. They yeah. didn't have last game. Same question for you guys. If the Seahawks win, who, who would be the player of the game? I got Lockett. Lockett. Because all the, like I said earlier, all the focus will be on DK versus Jalen. How do they match up? You'll hear Michael Irvin talking before the game and be all hype and all that. <laughs> you know what we're going to hear. But the true player and the one that really makes that that offense go is Lockett. Mm-hmm. He's been that heartbeat for the last five years. He's been the heartbeat of that team, making every splash play, every big play, the, 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 the incredible catches in the back of the end zone. I mean, he's done it. And I don't think he gets as much credit as he, he's due. He got snubbed for the Pro Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I agree. We were talking about how Russell doesn't get any credit before. I had a guy coming after me on Twitter this week saying that DK is the only threat at receiver for the Seahawks. And I had to hit him back like, uh, have you ever heard of Tyler Lockett? He finishes with the same amount of touchdowns as DK, uh, more catches than DK, and, you know, very close in yardage. So, yeah, Tyler Lockett. Yeah. For like five, six years. So. Ryan, who will be the player of the game if the Seahawks win? Yeah. I think uh, Seahawks receivers just don't get a lot of respect, too. Because you remember Doug Baldwin for years was like top five receiver and no one ever talked about him. Dude was just so good. That's why. Yeah. It's quiet, I guess. And, and, and I, no, I'm not saying it like off the field. I don't know him. But on the field, it, he was like a Heinz Ward type of guy. Yeah. No one really, you know what I mean? He was, uh, he was the one that would block the hell out of you. I've seen him punk some guys on my team. I Robert Woods. Yeah, he's like Robert Woods. Robert Woods is the same way. Quiet, production, blocker. Um, okay, but, but player of the game for the Seahawks that they win. I'm going to go with Chris Carson, who you guys talked about. If he does get over 22 carries like Lofa thinks, that means the running game's working, or at least they're sticking to it, and that's how they're going to win this game. So it's 22 carries? Touches. 22 touches, touches, touches. 22 touches. Uh, let me ask our, our, our players here a question because, I mean, these teams, this is the third time they're going against each other. So they know each other well and being division rivals, you know, I, it adds a lot of juice to the game. But, um, I mean, have you guys ever played another team three times in one season? And what's that like and what challenges does that present? Hmm. Great question. The Rams and the Seahawks, interesting enough, when the Rams were in St. Louis, they played in 04 the year before I got here three times. The Rams beat them all three times. Um the, the pros and cons, I mean, you, the pros, you, you know the team. You're familiar with them. Um, I would say 
And especially given that they only played a couple weeks ago, the game plan doesn't change that drastically. No. You know, you've only had a week since the final, you know, season and uh, final season game, and now this one. So, and I think the cons for for the Seahawks, I don't think anybody's talking enough about John Walford, and that we don't know anything about him, and that he can do different things than Goff. I think it would be a mistake for them to to play Goff, and uh, especially because he's hurt. They still owe him a ton of money, so he's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just. I understand what McVay's doing in, in the gamesmanship and trying to, you know, hold it close to the vest, but he, he's going to play Walford. There's there's no way you can put Goff out there. Yeah. His chances of winning this game go up with both Walford. But in playing the game, it, but but this being the third time they play, do you think it benefits one team more than another or, or not? Because they each team has won one to this point. I mean, they've split, but at both times they had key injuries. And yet again, we have a key injury. So right. it's hard to really say who's got the advantage because – while everybody's thinking, oh, man, if they just had Goff, Goff didn't look particularly sharp in either of the games they played. Yeah, he true. Was, he was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Ross, you ever played a team three times in one season? No, and I want to say Lopa is such a football junkie to know that the season before he got to the league. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, this guy's amazing. You just talk football with him, and he just – You're just good, a big I want to tell you that you're good. No, I have. I played teams back to back weeks. Uh, played the Jets and then I played them in the playoffs. The next week, wild card. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that was bad news. And um, <laughs> it was bad news both games. If, you, if huh? you guys beat the Jets, you would have knocked them out of the playoffs that year, right? Yeah, and it was bad news. Anyways, so it doesn't want to remember it. Oh uh, no, no, it was bad news. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those games. Hold on, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit into my life. So it's one of those games where they don't play all the starters right, and then just everyone's just playing. But there's no real game plan. So you guys just go out there because, and I'm sitting here like having to play 50 plays, be, and then it was it was. Yeah, well, see, and that's that's a situation. Them. You know, where the coaches they're like, okay, well, this is the team we match up with. I'm sure you felt confident, like you know, we match up well with these guys. We're gonna come out real vanilla. So they don't know what we're going to come after them with next week when we play them. And we're going to win in the playoffs. And we're going to know their whole game plan. But, you know, shit happens when you get to the playoffs, man. Like, we were 7-9 and nine and we beat the remaining uh, – the returning champs, the, the Saints. Yeah. When everybody was, like, laughing that like, a team with a losing record got in. So who knows what the Redskins can do. But the Browns and the Pittsburgh – I know we're going off topic a little here, Katie. Sorry. But <laughs> Pittsburgh didn't play their starters – and now they let the Browns in the playoffs. And it's I'm dangerous. Saying, it's dangerous. Dangerous, especially with that run game they got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's going to be a good matchup. So I can't answer your pre- question, Brett. Sorry. Never played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I've never played the same team three times either. No, no well, but, you know, maybe you know, next year since I'm an NFL yeah, DB now, you know? I was, maybe, you know, I was in Arizona for what, five years and I played Seattle twice. And, you know, playing a team, uh, so many times you know them there's no you're not fooling anyone mm-hmm. you know what i mean I, the, I knew exactly where the ball was going to go it was just it became just like who made that play or mm-hmm. who's situational was better you know like did the before the matchups would be you know between the quarterbacks or whatnot but then it came down to the last game like that punt mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know and who took advantage who got the fumble recovery did the guy drop it and those little things so i think this matchup is good, but I I just like last time that we talked. I favored Seattle and the Rams actually won. It was crazy, but I look at this as a way the quarterback position. Even if Goff was playing good or not, he gave you that. Well, he's highest paid, so he might give you something. He might throw for four bills on you. He might do what he did the first game, you know, and just randomly just streak and have a great game, mm-hmm. but. With this week, I feel like your defense will bottle up Walford and the rest will be history. Sorry, fans. Sorry, Ryan, because I know where you're going with this, and you look disappointed at me. Well, you are in this this, uh, Zoom. You're on top, so you're, like, looking down at me like – We're side by side on my Zoom, so, you know, you're okay. I'm looking down at me. Looking down at me. Looking down on – even though Brett's up above the universe, I'm looking down at him. Well, I, I think the thing too, uh, you know, it goes without saying, but I'll mention it. I think a one really disappointing thing for this entire game is that, you know, 
no fans, you know, and no, no, none of that playoff atmosphere coming from the crowd because, you know, the game obviously is in Seattle. And I think maybe part of the nerves that I'm definitely feeling is because we don't, we're not going to have those 12s like we always do. I mean, imagine how rocking that place would be, especially playing the Rams for the third time this season. And it's just, a, it's a real, it's a real, that's a real bummer, man. You got and weather, hard, you got yeah. weather on your side and, uh, yeah. you know, in Seattle, like Lofa knows, they turn the speakers on anyway. So, <laughs> well, I mean, it's a good point, though, Brett. Uh, you know, thinking about that now, Walter's just going to treat it like any other game he played. He's only played one other. There were no fans there, and now, uh, even though the stakes are a little higher, it's a playoff game. He probably won't be as rattled. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, anybody that had career games in the bubble for you know uh, basketball. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm leery of. I'm not paying them max contracts because there were no fans there. They weren't getting booed. They weren't out of their comfort zone. No they were in a it's arena. It's moving. Yeah. You know, so. You're at the wreck. Oh, imagine how lathered up those 12s would be to see uh, Wolford back there. I mean, it would just be definitely. Oh, I yeah. mean, they'd probably blitz every play just because he'd be scared shitless. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of energy in that place. And I think. Uh, that comes off your team too. We're not giving them enough credit in how they evolve and how they, they come to the game prepared to play. Mm -hmm. well, what do you touched on though was the, the, and speaking of all the injuries on the Rams side, what about defensively? We got Jaron Reed with an oblique strain. We got Jamal, and uh, I'm assuming they're all gonna go. They've been some have been held out of practice, but Jamal said he's full go. Uh, <laughs> You're not keeping Jamal Adams out of no his way. way. He's no too way. excited to play in the playoffs. Yeah. But, I mean, th those are two legitimate concerns on, on my part, um, you know, and, like, getting healthy is how we turn this – the acquisition of Carlos Dunlap, like Frosty mentioned, but getting our secondary healthy. DJ Reed has been a godsend. Um, I don't know what that guy was doing on somebody's practice squad, uh, but, you know, he's a legitimate starter. Baby. And, he, and he, yeah, he's, cha he, he's changed that secondary for us. Um, so, I, I yeah, we'll see how those injuries hold up. But we did – I think we brought Demarius Randall off practice squad. Who I've been, I've been clamoring to see that guy. Yeah, all year. yeah. With all the injuries we had, I don't know why he hasn't gotten a start. Yeah, it was odd. What a you kind of just alluded to most of it, but why has this defense turned around so much in the last six weeks? Because when we talked last time, they were thirty second rank. I think they jumped to like seventeenth. Obviously, you get Carlos Dunlop, but but what's like the reason this defense has gotten so much better? Is it just continuity or? Absolutely. Well, that's what I said going into the season. Okay. Yeah. On paper, everyone talks, Oh my God, they got, you know, an MVP caliber player in Jamal that they traded for, you know, Diggs is back there. Uh, Shaquille Dunbar was the highest rated corner. None of these guys have really played together at length. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of chemistry that has to develop in order to be, you know, firing all centers, not to mention coupled with the injuries on the D line and not having a pass rush essentially for the first Six games, seven games, when the offense was putting up all those great points, we needed those. But, you know, we acquired Dunlap, which was unbelievable. I was hoping we were going to get Kerrigan, too, out of, uh, Washington. Out of Washington. Yeah. Me and Brett were putting that over the airwaves. Oh, trying. Um, that would have been, been, been the worst. I was pissed when Dunlap went to you guys. <laughs> but that's the thing. You know, a lot of those back-end woes were because we didn't have any pass rush. And Frost can tell you how vital a pass rush is. And, like, you know – just like Frost said, don't disrespect any corner. But if 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 I have the top pass rush or some of those D lines that Frost was a part of in Cincy, I could have played corner. <laughs> I, I shit you not. And a lot of them got paid. Damn right they did. I, I believe Lofa could have. I, I believe that. Brett, I don't know. Me and you. Ah, how dare there. you? Come on. How dare you? Are you kidding me? Five nine, hundred and seventy pounds, soaking wet. Come on. Right. Let me I'm out there. Give me a helmet, beat. coach. You got me beat. <laughs> A 15, 20 yard cushion like we were at the beginning of the season. Well, you need to make a trip over there to that top pot donut and get you some. Oh, we'll, we'll send you those. That'll be the bet. We'll send you. Ah, I would just I'll play off coverage, wait for them to catch it, and then grab their ankle and hold on till you guys show up. That's yeah. my plan. That's what I did in freshman football. That's what I'm going to carry over into the pros. Overnight box of top pot donuts. Get you. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm telling you what, my best game in Seattle, we played, I would get up. No matter what, I always get up early anyway. Like 5.36, take a little cabbie. Before, even before Uber, I was in the cab. Damn, the yellow car. 
in the cat, yeah, the yellow ones, you know, the ones smell funky like uh, gym shoes. So I'm in there and I go over there to Top Pot and I'm just in heaven, bro. <laughs> I just look at the, I'm telling their selection. They are good. This is Brian, game? It? no, never heard of oh, it. Oh, God, it's like. The atmosphere of Top Pot. Like Top I, Pot it's, donuts, it's, man. it's not just like a it's donut. Experience. It's an experience. And every one of them is so good. I mean, I would do a sponsorship. <laughs> it's better than like Randy's Donuts or, or Voodoo Donuts out yeah. here in LA? Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, it's, it's got, like, they got everything. Yeah, it, it's, you, it's amazing. You guys win your, if you guys win your wagers, I'll go get a couple boxes, ship them down for you. There Deal. we go. Seattle okay. Donuts versus LA Donuts. I like it. Okay, yeah, so we'll send you like Voodoo Donuts, Lofa, or Brett. No, uh, no, I'm going to think of something better than that. I mean, I, would, <laughs> yeah, see, he, he's I would even take some real carne asada. If you guys okay. got oh, there you go. I can, well, I can do that. Do you want to do you want to or do you want my wife to make some I carne asada? I got a company. Ooh. Well, yeah, it's I mean. Movie. My wife's Mexican, pretty good. Your wife's services of cooking, I, that's up to you, man. That's a fight you have to fight. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll get that gone. Slap me. If I, I was like, yo, you got to cook this. I'm gonna send it to Dyroot and Frost. <laughs> but you know he's gonna buy it, so he's still gonna get his meal out of it. Oh yeah. Hey, should, it's yeah. should we move on? Should we move on to zone in players like we do on our show for yeah, a local yeah. company zone in CBD? Which, by the way, you can find in all Bartell's drugstores up there in the PNW or at zoneincbd.com. But we like to zone into players who we might not necessarily be zoning into most of the time, or you could just take one of the front runners like Russell Wilson or someone like that. But um, sometimes it's fun to take someone who is a little more unsung. Who who wants to start out? Who's who are you going to be zoning into this weekend? All right, I'll go for the Seahawks, of course. I'm going to be zoning in on Will Disley. Oh yeah, I see you, Frost Rook. Oh, oh Frost oh, my, the bottle my. is going in. Oh, there, that's all. Oh, talk, there about, we go. talk about product placement. <laughs> and now Wait, let's start this over. I'm you zoned in now. Oil real quick. What 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 did you hit? You hit the oil real quick, Frosty. What'd you do? I'm, I'm zoned in now, Brett. Yeah, All I'm right. Zoned. Okay. Um. So yeah, will this? Our receivers have not had great games against the Rams. The last two games. So I think we're going to try something a little different. Now, what, I really believe it's going to be Carson, but we're going unsung hero. Will okay. Disley? I think he's going to have a big game. I'm going to give him 75 yards. Whoa. Yes. What's what's funny, Lofa, is last time I did this, you went tight end as well. That was your zone in. It was a tight end. You went all three. You tried to do all three over eight <laughs> catches. But and hey, we lost. So maybe I should change that. I should change. Uh -oh. it. You already oh, zoned in. Yeah, you're locked in, man. Or zone. All right. Ah, oh, dollar in the jar. I got to put a dollar in the zone in jar. Sorry, I said locked yeah. in. My bad. Uh, who's going next? Ryan, you go next. Yeah, I'll go next. I'm going to zone in on the Rams' left tackle position because there's really? talk that Andrew Whitworth may actually be back. He was came off the on the 21 day window off the IR. And uh, Sean McVay said, if he's healthy, he is starting and he's out there running. He's looking good. But if not, it's Joseph Noteboom, who's played very well in his stead. Not as good as Whitworth, but he's still played very well. So I'm going to zone in on that position because that's obviously a key. I don't know if Carlos Dunlop is going to line up on the left or the right, um, but it's a very important spot on any football team. And we don't really know exactly who's starting. So I don't know if that's cheating or not, but I'm just going to zone in on the, the left tackle position. I am going to zone in on one of my favorite players. You want to talk about under the radar or unsung or whatever you want to say, uh, but not he's not under the radar or anything in Lofa and I's mind. We have a weekly meeting on the show of the KJ Wright fan club. And so I'm going to take my guy, KJ Wright. I, he's, he's had a great season. He switched positions. We've talked about it a lot on our show. Um, but I mean, you know, last week he's blowing up use check and, uh, and, <laughs> And just, he's always in the right place at the right time, blowing up screenplays and stuff. I think he's going to have another great game. And he does things that don't necessarily even show up on the stat sheet in terms of like tackles or whatever. Sometimes he's just taking the guy who's blocking him right into the play and, and messing everything up. And I mean, KJ Wright's a beast. I love KJ Wright to death. I know Lofa, you, you second that. And uh, so I'm looking I, at, I our that. KJ. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's who I'm watching. All right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I uh, guess you saved the, le the, the best for last. Um, <laughs> so, no, normally I would go with my man, Carlos Dunlap, because the whole story about Carlos Dunlap right now, I love. I love how he got his way out of Cincinnati. Uh, he did it his way. Uh, he got embraced by the culture in Seattle. He added energy. He added playmaking ability. And 
all that. And I just want to give him a shout out. But I'm going to go with uh, Jamal Adams. Mm. My zone in player just because I know what this means to him. He has been very vocal about what this means to him. And he's made his career on getting to this moment. And I really want to zone in on him and see how he attacks this game um, with the injury, everything. He's going to be my zone in player. Should we get predictions for the game before we get out of here? Let's, yeah, let's end it with that. Who wants mm. to start? Turn it off, Queen Latifah. All right, well, I mean, I'm already on the record in this episode. <laughs> How did that nickname come about? That, I don't know. Story behind I'm, that. What I'm still battling on our show, too, but I'm just going to keep powering through. Um, I already said on this episode, I think it's going to be kind of one of those ugly, ugly scoring games, at least. Uh, the Seahawks, for some reason, our games are always just such strange scores. Um, so, uh, you know, I think the Seahawks end up winning this one ultimately, but I think for both fan bases, it's going to be just a frustrating sort of just uh, in the trenches, old school, uh, run the football, uh, low scoring affair. And so I'm going to say uh, Seahawks win this one um, 16 to 11. 11. All right. <laughs> it's always a weird score. I love when we do score predictions and everyone's like, Pulled out these random ass scores. But it never ends yeah. up being the normal score that you think it's going to no. be. It's I mean, all- hey, at one point last week against the Cardinals, the Rams Cardinals game it was seven five. So you know, I guess I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, right. we had sixteen to six against the Niners last week. For yeah, a there you go. Yeah. Okay, eleven though. That'll be fun. Who wants? <laughs> you want me to go next? You can. All right. I'll probably be the lone one in this, like I was last time, but I was the lone one right. So I'll I'll just stick with that. But I'm going. I've always leaned on this Rams defense. I know there's question marks at quarterback. The offense has looked really stagnant and not good, but this defense is legit. Obviously ranked number one, but the rankings don't even say it all. They're, they're, you know, mobbed the ball every time the ball carrier, whoever it is. Brandon Staley, first year coordinator, already has two head coaching interviews because that's how good of a job he's done creating star players out of guys that were not well known. Um, and I just think they're that good and they're that dominant. I'm going to go with a low score as well, though. It's going to be a slugfest. Uh, I'll go uh, Matt Gay. Win at the end of the game for the Rams, 16-13. Mm. A little more traditional score. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll go next. Um, I also believe this is going to be a low-scoring affair, but I do feel like, just like last time, I'm going to go with the Hawks. I'm going to go with Russell Wilson still doing his thing, and um, I'm going 24-21. And that's low-scoring to me because of what Russell is capable of doing. Yeah. Okay. If I'm gonna predict this game, I'm going Hawks. Low scoring, obviously, just like you guys all believe it's gonna be ball control by both sides. Um, I really think rather than playing to win, they're both gonna be playing very conservative and not give the game away because both defenses are playing so well and relying on one of the defenses to get a timely turnover to put the offense in position to take a chance if they're going to. But I don't think we're gonna see Russell cooking out the gates. I think we're going to see a healthy dose of Chris Carson and uh, and the Rams. I think, you know, Walford might have more rush attempts than completions when it comes down to it because McVay is going to be in his ear like, do not throw it away. Do not throw it away to the other team. So final score, uh, Seahawks. We go funky scores on our store, on our, on our pod. So let's go 19 to 13. All right. All right. Everyone. Yeah. yeah. If I can say one more last final thing, yeah. I think these last, if, if there's a wild card and I know it's, you know, it's cop out to call a coach a wild card, but I feel like these last two years, McVeigh is still beloved like nationally and still considered like a great coach and a wonder mine, but there's been some doubt starting to creep in, you know, not just in Los Angeles, but a little bit more locally about his play calling about, can he win the big game? Can he win without superstars like he did two years ago? And so I think he's going to be coaching his ass off to really prove doubters wrong to say, Hey, you know, we've, we've had injuries. We've had some stuff come up, but I, you know, I can win with these guys and, and my scheme can still work. So I think that's well, the wild card. Pete Carroll, so he's, he better eat his lunch too, you know? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No slouch over there. No. Wrap us up, Ryan. Well, great show as always. Love joining these guys. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, hope everyone enjoyed listening. Um, where can everyone find uh, you guys at Brett? Oh, you guys can check us out any social media at Seahawks pod or Seahawks. Just start searching Seahawks podcast. We'll come up. You'll see our names in the logo. That's us. Or you can email us if you've got questions, comments, concerns, or you want to, you know, yell at me about 
my potential career in the NFL, whatever. It's all fair game. Seahawks pod at gmail.com. And uh, you can find us at, uh, at LAFB Network on every social media platform, the LA Football Podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. We're also video platform, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, great show. We, before we close off, Loaf and Frost, me, me and Brett were talking last night. We were, we were actually talking to do bets. And we were like, what if we did a bet loser has to be hit, has to pad up and be hit by the opposing player? I'm like, well, that just puts it all on me and Brett. That doesn't give them anything. I know. I we I I, I gotta I gotta rethink that one. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you hit me, <laughs> and Frost can hit Brett. It still wouldn't end well. It still wouldn't end well. Honestly, guys, if if it wasn't COVID, if it wasn't COVID, and there weren't these restrictions for the good of the pod and for the, for my love of the Belief Sports Network, I honestly I would do it. I would do it too. Brent's at to hit but I don't I, I the thing is though I was I would duct tape my mouth before it happens I don't want to say anything else to get frosty going even further you know what I mean I got to try it before it happens I, I would get any extra juice I would duct tape my mouth so everyone couldn't hear me screaming like a little girl <laughs> as he came to hit me and I'd probably be writing my my will for my wife and daughter beforehand too but but anyway maybe next year so uh <laughs> great show guys appreciate you both frosty appreciate you as always uh looking forward to this game uh since I have the last word go Rams Oh, go Hawks. Do y'all want to say shout out to Belly Clothing Brand? That's at Belly Clothing Brand in Memphis, Tennessee. Shout out, cuz. Uh, we represent. Hell yeah.